Portrait photography is my thing, but occasionally I've dabbled into other kinds of photography, including macro photography, because sometimes it's just fun uh, or useful to, uh, you know, just get like right up close to details and things like that, because you can get a different perspective, you know, or it just can be instructive depending on what you're trying to do. Insects, little objects, uh, you know, the details. Uh, it's, sometimes it's cool to get right up close to something that you can't quite see with the naked eye. Uh, and it also helps me when I'm doing tutorials because sometimes I want to show an up close uh, thing on my camera or some lens or a piece of gear of some sort. Now you can do macro any number of ways, but uh, really maybe the best way to do it is to buy a good macro lens, a good high quality macro lens. Uh, you know, but uh, everybody, uh, not everyone wants to do that, so they uh, they look for alternatives like me. I looked for different ways to do it, and uh, there certainly are a number of ways you can achieve macro. There's diopters. You can just slip right on the front of your lens, just like a lens filter does, and it's essentially it's a magnifying glass that goes on the end of the lens. There's lens reversing, where uh, you can uh, you don't have to buy anything, maybe, and just take your lens off and hold it. Uh, backwards onto your camera, onto the camera, the lens mount, and uh, you know, use it backwards, and you can get really extreme close-ups of things. Uh, but uh, you know, sometimes it doesn't work. Let's see how huge this, uh, the diameter of this is compared to the lens mount. I'm sure there are adapters that will allow you to do that, and you don't have to hold it uh, with your hands. It'll just kind of stay on there. There are also adapters that screw onto the end of lenses so that you can actually take one lens, screw this adapter on, and mate it with another lens, and that other lens will be reversed. There's a thing called a macro bellows, which will, again, it'll allow you to attach uh, your lens to the end of the bellows, your camera to the other end, and just kind of move it back and forth, kind of like an accordion. And the bellows will allow you to get uh, macro shots and extreme close-ups. But my favorite, uh, by far, among all of these things, uh, you know, except for actually buying and, and having a nice macro lens to work with. My favorite solution uh, is the extension tube set. These are really just simple adapters. They're, they're just spacers. They contain no glass, so you're relying on your own lens and a few millimeters of extra space between the lens mount and the rear of the lens, and that's going to allow you to get some good macro shots. Now, extension tube uh, sets like this uh, these are a little more advanced than your basic ones. These have electronic contacts so that your lens and camera are still communicating with each other for things like focus control. Now, personally, I'm not sure how important autofocus is when I'm doing macro with an extension tube set uh, because I, I generally just move my camera back and forth just slightly to get things in focus rather than trying to actually have the lens focus onto uh, an object. I mean, you've got very thin, shallow depth of field with macro, so any slight movement is gonna throw your subject, or the portion of the, your subject that you're trying to get a, a shot of, it's gonna throw that out of focus very quickly. Now I find that starting with a shorter focal length lens is best. Uh, here I'm using a 24 to 70 millimeter zoom. Now this extension tube set that I was showing you before, this is the one that I used for my Canon cameras. Uh, this is by Velo. Now I'm shooting with Sony, at least for the time being, and uh, I needed to, to purchase another set. Now this set, the one for the Canon, cost me about 80 bucks. And this one I found on Amazon. I was a little dubious about it. I wasn't sure how, you know, if it was gonna work or not, or if it might. I, I guess I was really nervous about whether or not, you know, the contact situation on these. Uh, you know, the electronics are a little delicate in these cameras. Uh, you know, you're spending two grand on a camera body and you don't want to put something that's not really well made and doesn't have good electronic connections. You don't want to put that, uh, attach that to your camera and lens and short something out. I mean, that would be a bummer. So yeah, these have the contacts on them and, uh, uh, you know, thank goodness they worked and did not short my Sony out. I purchased this on Amazon. Yeah, so you get a 10 millimeter and a 16 millimeter. Now on the uh, the set that I had, uh, that I got for my Canon, it's got three rings in it. Uh, 
Got a 13, a 21, and a 31 millimeter. And the thing is that these things can be stacked. So, you know, if you want more distance and get just really up tight on things, you can stack them. Uh, with this kit, you've only got the 10 and 16 millimeter. They can also be stacked. So it's got some other pictures, I guess, showing these things in different con uh, configurations. I'm not really sure how useful that is. Uh, oh, look, this is how it attaches to a lens. And uh, there's an example of what you can do. And it looks like, you know, depending on what type of camera you have, you might end up paying a little more. All right, so hey, enough talk about this. Why don't we go ahead and try these out? So I've been pretty happy with this model of this brand, but make sure if you're, if you're considering doing something like this, look around, uh, definitely read the reviews, do some due diligence. Uh, you want to make sure that other people have successfully used the product you're considering. I'm going to link to this particular product below, and I'm also going to throw in some other links to some other products that you might want to consider. At least that's, that'll give you a good starting point for, uh, you know, looking into extension tubes that uh, that'll work for you. Now again, I want to stress that there are a lot of ways to do macro photography. Uh, I detail all of these in an ebook that I wrote a while back. I'm going to link to that below. Just go ahead and check that out. It can be really helpful as far as uh, you know, uh, trying to come up with a solution that'll work for your budget, uh, that'll work for the way that you want to shoot. There's lots of example images in there, and lots of little tests that I've done, and there's some stuff about focus stacking and some other uh, neat tricks that you can try. Hey, if you found this video at all useful, go ahead and subscribe. Click the like button and leave a comment below. Otherwise, I think that's about all we've got for you today, guys. I'll see you next time.